Hello everyone, my name is Alex with the Station Public Library Studio, and today we will be going over how to create a garden planter in Tinkercad. If you are new to Tinkercad, the first thing you want to go to is tinkercad.com, and then it will ask you to sign in or sign up, depending on if you have an account already or not. So you're going to hit sign in, and then you'll see this screen right here, and you're going to want to click this button right here, email or username, or you can sign in with a social media account like Google, Apple, Microsoft, or Facebook. You can also make an account right here. You're going to create a personal account and then sign up. Once you have an account, you should be signed in. So we're going to skip ahead here while I sign in. And I'll be back in one moment. Okay, welcome back. Now that we're here, this is going to be your main design screen here. If you've already done work in Tinkercad, you'll see projects down here. If you haven't, you're going to click the Create a New Design button since there won't be anything down here. And you will load into this screen right here. Okay, so this is the main workspace area. And then up on the top left, if you hit Create a New Design, chances are it gave you some randomly generated words. If you click on those words, we can rename it. You can call it garden planter and then you can put your name in here if you'd like and then I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the area and then we're gonna get started making a custom planter so in the top left here we have a box that shows the different sides of our work plane this allows us to click and hold and then we can drag around and this lets us move our work plane around the home button here returns the view back to the default view the home view the fit all in view has to do with how many objects or what objects you have on your work plane. So if you have a box in the back corner here and then you have a bigger box here, you can click on a box that you want to work on, say this box in the back corner, and then click on the fit all in view and it will zoom into that particular box. Maybe you're done working over here, you want to go back to this other box, click that same button, it will fit the view back to that other material and then we can click home and it will fix our view back to the default view. The plus button zooms in, the minus button zooms out, and then the bottom button switches between 2D flat or 3D um, geometric views. So you can use that to switch between a flat view and a 3D view. Up in the top left here, we have copy and paste. We also have duplicate and repeat, a trash icon to delete things, an undo and a redo button to go back through steps or uh, go back forward if you've gone back and want to revert those again. We have notes visibility, so if you want to add a note to a part, you can add a note. You can show all, including, including hidden objects, if you have hidden things. We have the group button here. This allows us to take two objects, uh, either a solid or a whole. So we'll take two solids into holes, so I can show you how they work. So I'll kind of put those together so they're all touching. Then if I highlight them all and click the group button, it will combine them all. So the, sh the solids that were touching each other become one solid, and then any anything that was considered a whole is removed from the other shapes. So to ungroup, if you have a grouped object, you can click on that grouped object and then click the group button. So ungroup will work in steps depending on how things were grouped. So if I first group the solids, and then I group the whole, we end up with the same object, but if I hit ungroup, it will ungroup just that one object first. So you can layer your group stacking, that way you can get the object that you want and you can go backward and forward through groupings and ungroupings if you want to make changes. It might be easier to stack things one at a time, that way you can more easily revert through the work that you've done to make uh, slight changes depending on how you want the shape to be grouped. Like maybe if we want the hole in the middle here, we can group it there. And now it's a cutout in the middle of that object, which would have been much harder if we had to separate every object at once and then make more changes to it. Over here, we have an align button so we can align objects together. So we can align them based on a particular location. So I can make them even at a certain location. I could automatically center them here. I can drag one out. And if I highlight both objects again, we can click that align button and then I can tell it align 
there or here or however I want to position the, the shapes next to each other. That allows me to quickly group objects together or position things in orientation to other things. This allows me to mirror an object here, the mirror button, so I can flip something over. So if I had a particular shape and I wanted to make a mirrored copy, I can do that here. The import button allows you to import 3D models that already exist. So say you found a nice planter that you liked on Tinkercad, but you, uh, not Tinkercad, if you, want, if you found a planter you liked on Thingiverse and you wanted to edit it in Tinkercad, you could download that planter from Thingiverse, click the import button here, and choose that file, and then you're going to import it in, and then you can make changes to it in Tinkercad. The export button is what we're going to use once we're done with our object. So if this was our planter here, we can click export, and then we would choose STL, and that's the 3D file that we're going to use to 3D print your planter. We'll go over that again at the end once we have our planter made. So now we have this menu here, Tinkercad Basic Shapes. If you click on there, it'll be a drop-down menu with a bunch of different shapes, different shape libraries of different things. So we can choose through all kinds of different sections. So if you go to Shape Library, you can go to Design Starters, or all these different shapes. If you wanted, say, a vase, you can make edits to that. And that could be the starter for your planter. You can make other changes as you saw fit. You can go to materials for making. You can go through text and numbers to find different shapes. There's tons of shapes in here, so you can pick whatever your favorites are. But for the most of the tutorial here, we're going to be working with basic shapes. So, in the basic shapes section, we can scroll down here and we can look through the different shapes that they provide to you. And we can pick any of those shapes and click and hold and drag. And it will pull that shape out of the shape menu and onto our work plane where we can place it. Once we've placed the shape, we can then interact with the shape. So, if you have a shape selected, so if you click on it, you'll see all of these different functions of the shape here. So we have these white boxes here. This allows us to click and hold and drag to adjust the length and width of this box. We can also type in one of the boxes that appears here. So if I wanted this to be 80, I can type in 80 and it would automatically set that size to 80, 80 millimeters. Uh, the height, same thing. If we click on that top box here, we can adjust the height in millimeters. Then we have these black boxes here. This just moves the object in one direction. So if I wanted to shorten the box this way, I could click and hold on this white, but I can also end up accidentally moving the width of the box and adjust in both directions. But if I wanted this number to stay at 70, but I wanted to make this smaller, I can drag just this black bar down and I can shorten the box in that one direction. In addition to those, there's a few other things we could do with this box. So we have three different rotation planes here. So we've got this rotation plane where we can rotate it this way. Then we've got this secondary rotation plane here where we can rotate it. You can also type in the exact number of degrees that you wanted it to be rotated. And then we have this third one here where we can rotate this way. Finally, for each object, there's this cone at the top, or depending on how you're viewing, the cone might be below. That cone allows you to change where it's located in space, vertical space. So if you wanted the object to be 20, meter, uh, 20 millimeters above the work plane, you can drag that cone up and down until this number here reads 20. Additionally, for most shapes, we have this shape menu here. So this allows us to first decide if we want the shape to be a solid or a whole. The hole will cut out other shapes, and the solid means it will interact with other solids and combine to be a larger shape. If you click on this color here, you can make um, your objects different colors, so that way you can keep them organized. This has no bearing on the final print. This is just for your reference within Tinkercad. The color that your object will print is whatever you choose to print it in when you send the file to us. So for now, I'll leave it red. We could change the radius of our shape here, and that will round out the edges. We could change the number of steps of our shape. That will make it more smooth on the sides. And then we have length, width, and height toggles. So if you don't want to 
make adjustments there, we can edit them right through here. But you're probably okay leaving these at the default values here and then editing the shape in space there. If you're happy with your shape, you can of course lock it in place and this will prevent changes from happening to that particular shape there. So nothing can make adjustments or move this shape at all until you unlock it. So if you were trying to select a handful of objects but not select some objects in your workspace, you can lock the objects that you don't want to make changes to. Then you can highlight everything and group them or ungroup them or make other changes and the locked objects will not be affected. You can also hide objects entirely from being edited so you can't see them at all. The only way to view them again is to click the show all button. Okay, now that we've covered that, we can look in the bottom right hand corner here where you will see an edit grid and a snap grid menu. So if we click on edit grid, the first thing you'll see here is units. Uh, chances are most people are gonna be comfortable working in inches, but you can leave this in whatever field you're gonna be comfortable in. You can leave the presets alone, 7.87 by 7.87 .7 is fine. So we can hit update grid. And then snap grid is how much each object is moving when you adjust it. So if we place this box down here and we look at its orientation within the grid and I move it with an arrow key, left one, you can see it moved one uh, smaller square space. That is one eighth of an inch. If I set this to a sixteenth, you'll see the object will now move in half spaces. Or if I set it to a thirty-second, it's now going to move four times to get through one eighth of an inch, and so on and so forth. This is useful if you're trying to position an object in an exact location, um, or trying to line something up to something else. Um, having a smaller snap grid size can help you accomplish that. Okay, now that we've covered the basics of Tinkercad, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start building the planter. So typically a planter is a somewhat cylindrical shaped object with some holes in the bottom to allow for water to flow through, uh, air, and for the roots to grow. It needs to be relatively big, uh, but it again is gonna depend on what you're looking to plant in there. So if you had um, a smaller flower or maybe a um, vegetable or something smaller like uh, mint or perhaps parsley um, and you had that plant already, what you can do is you can measure the base area of soil that you have for that plant and then measure, overestimate a little bit. So if the base for that soil is maybe three inches by three inches, you probably will want to add a little bit more soil in there and make it maybe four inches-ish. Um, that's going to vary obviously from plant to plant but we're gonna just make a generic planter here and make those changes as we see fit. So if we wanted to start with a basic cylinder, we could drag that cylinder in. And if you look closely, you'll see this cylinder has um, not so smooth sides. So we can adjust that by changing the number of sides to the maximum 64. If we want, we can also bevel the edge a little bit and that will smooth out the edges. Okay, now that we have that, what we can do is we can start turning this into a planter. First things first, we need to make this the size that we want. Right now, this is one inch by one inch by one inch. Maybe we want our planter to be two inches wide by two inches, and then I want it to be two and a half inches tall. That'd be a pretty thin planter, but you can of course make something bigger. So if your planter you need it to be five inches by five inches. And maybe a little bit shallower, four inches tall, you could do that. And now that we have our basic shape here, we can cut out the middle part and then we're gonna have to start making some other changes to get our planter fully finished. So to start that, I'm gonna drag in a hole, the cylinder, and we're gonna make that slightly smaller than the uh, total size of this. So if that's five, I'm gonna make this four and a half by four and a half to start, but we'll likely need to make that a little bit differently sized. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select the two of these and I'm gonna hit the align button here 
and I'm going to tell it to place both objects inside of each other. And that will be right there. Okay, so now that they're aligned in the center, you can see that the hole that I had cut out fits right within that rim of the bevel that I need by adjusting the bevel of the shape here. Um, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm content to leave it the way that it is. But if we group it here, you'll see we have a small bit of a problem. Um, there's no bottom. It's a, uh, just a tube now. So that's not what we want to do. We want to ungroup that, and if you look if you click on the hole here, and if you look at the bottom, you can see this dotted line. That shows how far down um, the shape that you have selected is going, and it's touching the very bottom of our uh, base here, which is not what we want. We want it to be a little bit higher up. So to do that, we're going to need to use that tool from before this cone, and we're going to drag it up maybe about an eighth or a quarter of an inch. So now you can see that that line is there. So that might be a little too high, and maybe we want to make it an eighth of an inch instead, so it ends right about the bevel, right there. So now if we group these, we still have a base to our shape, which is exactly what we want. Now we can go in and make some other changes here, so we can add some holes to the bottom. So if we wanted to add a larger hole in the middle, maybe we want this hole to be a half inch by a half inch. And we want that to be in the center of these objects. So I'm going to use the align button again to perfectly center that shape within the other shape. And now if I group the two of these together, I have a hole cut right out of the middle, which is exactly what I wanted. And then if you don't want that shape there, you can of course use the align button again to make some other adjustments. Uh, you can position it in different locations if you wanted it, depending on where you wanted to put your hole. You can have multiple if you'd like. So maybe you want, instead of one half inch hole, you do a handful of smaller quarter inch holes. So we could do four of these instead. You can place them there. And I'm just going to use my arrow keys to move the shapes around. Okay, now that those are there, I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to hit group. I'm going to make sure that they're touching the bottom of my shape here. That way they go all the way through. And you can always double check that by taking a look at where the bottoms are going. And they are definitely going all the way through. So now if I group everything, I can look and I have four holes here. They're not perfectly aligned, but you can make adjustments as you see fit if you want them to be perfectly spaced. Okay, that looks better. Okay, now we can start making other changes to the planter if we wanted. We can add some designs to the sides or make other adjustments here. We can cut out some text in the middle. So maybe we wanted to, um, maybe we knew what we were going to plant in here ahead of time. And what we were going to put in here was a mint plant. So what I'm going to do is drag out a few letters from the text and numbers area for mint. And I'm going to start doing some rotation. OK. Once I have my letters oriented the way that I want them, I'm going to rotate them by 90 degrees this way. That way they're flat. I'm going to do the same thing for the other two letters. And lastly, for the M. Okay, now that I have all the text this way, 
I'm going to move them up into the air, just like this. I'll work on sizing and positioning in a second. So something like that. And now I'm going to drag them so that way they're touching. I'm going to make these letters a little bit bigger. I'm going to try and match the same thing this way. And you can always move your camera around by right clicking, um, by using your right click button and holding, and then dragging your mouse around. And that will allow you to change your view. I'm going to position the end in the same location. The end down one. Okay, and then I just want to make sure that there's even spacing between the letters, which there is. So I'm going to move the T down a little bit so it's at the same height as the other objects. I'm going to drag it out a little bit. All right, so that looks about right. So what I'm going to do instead of having these solid is I'm going to turn all of the letters into holes here, just like this. And then I'm going to drag out this direction right there. So I'm going to drag out across. And just make sure you're clicking on your actual shape here. This can be a little bit tricky, uh, but you can definitely drag it through. If you need, you can always use the fit to view button to drag out letters. You just want to make sure that they're coming all the way through. You don't need them this far. These can go back a little bit. And I'm going to do the T. Drag that through. OK, so now if I group all of these together, just like this, I'll have a cutout inside of my plant that says mint. And then when you put the soil in there, it will have some contrast because it will be black behind it or whatever color your soil is. So that will give a very clear and quick way to know what plant is growing in each planter. Um, that way, if anyone's curious, you don't have to put a label in it. Your planter is already labeled for that particular uh, plant. Same thing if you wanted to do any other plant, just use different letters and then arrange them and then cut them out of the center, and that will give you your planter. You can, of course, use uh, different shapes. So if you liked some of the other shapes in perhaps the shape library that we were looking at, so if you go to design starters, maybe you really like the vase that was in here and you want it to just work off of this. You can, of course, put a hole at the bottom of there and then put the name in here. And this will give you a very nice looking um, shape. And we can adjust this to whatever shape we wanted. So if you wanted this to be 3 by 3 by 2.5, now you can turn this into a vase and it will keep those holes on the sides. And then you can put a hole in the bottom and make whatever other changes you'd like to this. And then that can be your vase as well, or your garden planter. Once you have your planter finished, which for our purposes, this is a finished planter here, we're going to want to export this and then send it over to the studio. That way we can print it for you. So to do that, you're going to click the export button. There's going to be some options here. So everything in the design or the selected shape. So if you were perhaps working on a few different designs while you're in here, right? And we have multiple different shapes just scattered around as you made changes and revisions to different planters. And then you go to export. We don't want everything into this design. We don't want these other revisions. We just want the one planter that you were happy with. So you're going to click on that finished planter, and you'll see that it's highlighted. And when you hit export, you'll see the selected shape or everything in the design. We're going to want the selected shape. Now, of course, if the only thing you have in your work plane is the one shape here, and you hit export, it won't matter because you only have the one shape. Once you're at this screen here, you're going to want to hit this STL button right here. This will download the STL to your computer as whatever you named it here. Uh, you can put in your full name here if you wanted. 
You could put in the color that you wanted the plant or however you wanted to do it here. And then I'm going to walk you through how to submit that print job to us. Once you have your file, what you're going to do is you're going to email that file to us. The email you're going to send your planter to is studio, S-T-U-D-I-O, at sachemlibrary.org. That can also be found on our website. So if you go to our website here. Okay, so once you have your file downloaded, what you're going to do is you're going to email that file to us. So the email you're going to send your file to is studio, S-T-U-D-I-O, at sachemlibrary.org. In that email, please include your full name, your library barcode number, that way we can verify you are in this class. Make sure to attach this as an attachment to that email. So hit file attach and then choose the STL file that you just downloaded. You'll also want to make sure to let us know what color that you want the planter to be. So please specify blue or green or pink or whatever other color you want. If in Tinkercad, you chose the color that you wanted here, and then we open up your STL, we will not have whatever color this was. It will just be a generic color. There's no way for us to know what you put here. So please specify the color uh, that you want your planter to become once it's printed. Once you have all that information in there, you can also put in a phone number if that's how you'd prefer to be contacted. If you don't put in your phone number, we will email you back once your planter has been printed. Um, and of course, if you were doing this as part of our program, the planter that you submit via email with your barcode number will be free of charge. So send, send us your planter at studio at sachemlibrary.org, and we'll print it for you, and then you'll be able to pick it up within the next few weeks once your planter's done and we've printed it for you. Um, phone number is probably the easiest way for us to contact you, but if you'd prefer us to contact via email, just simply don't provide us a phone number and we can contact you that way, or you can state your preference of contact in the email itself. I hope you enjoyed our class today. I look forward to seeing everyone in planters. Have a great day.